So in this video, we're going to take a look at Pernix Data's Flash Virtualization Platform, FVP. So a couple things. First off, uh, for any management, you install their management server, which is really a um, piece of software that you don't ever deal with. You install it, point it to vCenter, and it adds the plugin that we'll see here. So here's the plugin, and you're probably familiar with the Update Manager plugin, where you click install and installs a little client, and it gives you more functionality. This is the same way. Once you install that, you see the little Pernix data tabs on several different objects. So you'll install that, point to vCenter, get the plugin, and then on each host, I've SSH'd into one of mine here, you'll install this extension or a vib. And uh, since this is beta, it's not signed or anything. So when I do the install, I just did it manually on my three hosts, ESXCLI, software, a vib, install, dash D, Pernix, and I have to do no sig check. Final version will be signed and all that good stuff. But just go through and do that. Uh, when I did that, the host has to be in maintenance mode. You install it, then you can just take it out of maintenance mode. You don't have to reboot if you don't want to. No problem with that. So it took all of, I don't know, 10 minutes to install this stuff. Uh, I've got three hosts. We can see that over here. And each host has a Samsung 840 Pro uh, 128 gig SSD. Not the best SSD, but for my little lab here, they work just fine. Now, once you've installed those pieces, it's ready to be configured. So we go at the cluster object, Pernix data tab, and you can hit get started, and it'll obviously walk you through the wizard of creating the flash clusters, adding the devices, and then associating the data stores and the VMs. I've already done that, but I'll show you what you do. So we go to flash cluster, and I've already created one called Nash Lab FC. Uh, flash cluster, again, kind of groups your hosts and your flash devices and your VMs together into these pools to make them easier to manage. My expectation is most people will have one flash cluster per vSphere cluster. That probably makes the most sense. Though if you did have a cluster split for other reasons, maybe a couple of hosts for databases using affinity rules or something, you could do it, you could split it like that. But I expect we'll see a lot of one-to-one -one mappings. So you'll create it and it's basically an empty container and then we need to start adding things. So we'll come back to this screen in a minute. But first thing you do is you add your devices. So I added my SSD from each host. So you go add devices. It's not going to show anything since I've already added my SSDs. I can click show all, but it would list the one for each host. Cool thing about Pernix, it doesn't matter what kind of flash. It could be a PCIe card, could be a solid state drive like I'm using here, whatever. They don't have to be the same in each host. They don't have to be the same size. You could have two SSDs in one, one in another, whatever. Just go through and pick and choose what you want to add. Then you'll add your data stores and your VMs. And when you do that, you'll set the write policy. So I've already added all mine that are on the data store 4, which is the only block data store I have. So let's take a look at it. We'll hit edit. So you'll set a write policy. So write through, the first option, is basically read-only cache. Uh, when a VM reads something off my storage uh, box, which is a Synology with uh, five 7200 RPM 1TB drives and a RAID 5 set, when it reads data in, It'll be cached on the SSD, given to the VM when the VM writes. It's written to the SSD again for caching, but immediately written back to the Synology, and the VM waits for the acknowledgement. So if it has to read something again, it's already in cache, it's very quick, but writes still wait on the back in storage. But a lot of people like this because it's, I guess it'd be the safest. But you also have the option of write back. In write back cache, when I write data, or uh, VM writes data, it is written straight to the SSD, acknowledged locally and the VM continues on its business. Then Pernix Data will destage that stuff from the SSD back to the storage system uh, in the background. The problem is what, what happens if I lose the SSD or the PCIe card or whatever before the cache is destaged. And that's where write redundancy comes in. So we've got some options. We can say local flash only, meaning there is no redundancy. You just We just all cross our fingers hope we don't lose a device and everything's good. Or you could do redundancy where you can write to one or more hosts and mirror a copy. So when the VM writes data, he writes it to the local flash. It's immediately synchronous written to another one or more hosts. Uh, and the VM doesn't receive an acknowledgement to the right until it's written to that other host. Pernix data gets the acknowledgement back from the other host or host and then it gives the acknowledgement to the VM. The idea being is when I write to the other host, they're also flashed, so they're very quick, still faster than writing it to the storage array by far. Um, you just need to keep some things in mind. 
mainly your interconnects between your servers. And since this does use vMotion interfaces, just keep that in mind. It will be using bandwidth across the vMotion interfaces even when you're not doing vMotions. So, you know, just something to think about. But in my lab, I do one remote peer. And so whenever a VM writes, like this vCenter VM, it's copied to at least, or I'm sorry, it's copied to one other host in my lab. Nice thing is you can go on a VM by VM basis, you can go to data storage, you can pick and choose this and granularly and say I want to do write back for these but write through for those, one peer for these, two peer for those, and you can go through and set that. So pretty slick. And then we have settings which is nothing but a name and a description. So set up your flash cluster, add your data stores, add your VMs, and then we can look at it. So my lab has three hosts, you can see all my hosts are green one flash device per host so we see those there flash cluster status is a okay we can see things like the consumers of the flash so I have nine VMs that are eligible and running oops did not mean to click that right there we'll come back to you in a second then we can say which ones are not eligible there's some problem some configuration thing where they're not eligible to be used or you can blacklist VMs so you can say I do not want these VMs to use uh, you know FVP for whatever reason don't use it for these and you can specify those so again very granular over on the right we have overall performance this is a cluster level so you can see my lab is just tearing it up today at 14 whole IOPS uh, throughputs about 160 K ish average latency is 2 milliseconds flash hit rates 97 percent and then it shows you kind of aggregate numbers or summary numbers so we can see that uh, we have saved about mm, right at 20 million IOPS that have not gone to the data store. So we would done 20 million reads that we service locally instead of actually going over the storage fabric to the Synology. We have saved, you know, 434 gig of traffic going across and we've accelerated about 15 and a half million writes. So this is only over the last, let's see, the 20th day, 24th, only over the last four days. And again, I don't beat this thing up. So in a production environment, you'd really see some great numbers but this gives you kind of your overall view and then we can dive into this stuff so before we do that I want to show you one other thing let's click a host go to configuration go to storage data store 4 so when you add and enable data store 4 for uh, FVP it makes a change and I want to show you how it does that so we go to manage pass and Pernix puts in their own PSPs pass selection policies so you still have the standard ones in VMware, your fixed, your round robin, your MRU, and it, it flips it over automatically. You don't do this, it does it when you enable it for FVP. So before mine was just VMware MRU, now it's Pernix MRU, and that's how it plugs in. This is a great way to do it. There's nothing you need to install in the guest, nothing in the VMs, no changes, uh, and I'll show you that as well. But the only downside to this is you can't use something like PowerPath VE, which Pros and cons there. I don't think Pernix's um, PSPs are going to be as efficient on load balancing and things as a PowerPath, but the majority of the people I deal with don't buy PowerPath in the first place. And really, if you're starting to service uh, reads and writes locally, you may not have a need for PowerPath VE anymore. But I just wanted to show you how it plugs in. And as an example, vCenter, edit there's nothing odd in the VM so you may have seen other uh, uh, flash uh, caching solutions that add RDMs or other devices into the VMs none of that mess here there's no changes that happen we can vMotion these VMs DRS HA doesn't matter they work just fine so from an administrative standpoint nothing you do really changes uh, it's it's very slick so we've got everything configured we've got our devices we got our VMs now let's take a look so we can look at usage so usage is well, what it sounds like it's gonna say uh, on a per VM basis because we've got the VM selected this VM is using this much local storage network storage requested policies right back and status is, is also right back your requested and your status may sometimes differ if there's an issue if a host uh, for some reason can't communicate with a peer it will disable right back and set the status to right through so it will still accelerate as best it can but to protect and be safe it will turn off right back cache so that's why you'll see what you want and what you get local and network um, this is one of these things of pros and cons and different uh, solutions like this will look at it different ways I think honestly Pernix is doing it the right way 
So you boot vCenter, my vCenter VM here on host Bumblebee, for example. Uh, let's see which host is on Optimus. It used to be on Megatron. All right, I've named all my hosts. So he used to be on Megatron. So he booted up, came up on Megatron. He did some reads, did some writes, started using up the cache there. DRS said, I need to rebalance the cluster. vCenter, I'm going to move you from Megatron to Optimus. He v motions him over. Pernix does not copy the cache sitting on the SSD in Megatron to Optimus. Um, some people will say, well, don't you want to do that because you're going to have to rewarm cache. Well, Pernix looks at it like this. If he's sitting on Optimus and he needs to do a read and that data is sitting on Megatron, we'll just pull it off Megatron. There's no reason to dump 50 gig of data across the wire if we don't need it. If we do need it, we'll just ask the other host to pull it off flash. It's still way faster than going to disk in most cases, but we don't copy all that over and use up the flash on the local system. And as he reads, it will then be moved to local and kept local. All writes stay local, except when they're again mirrored over to the other host. So it has not moved that over, and I think that's the right solution because it adds a lot of vMotion time, especially if you want to do something like uh, put a host in maintenance mode and evacuate all the VMs. I just don't think that's a good solution. So that is why you'll see network and local. So it'll show local, network, and all that good stuff. If you want to see it from a flash device view, click that. Click one of your devices and it'll show the VMs, how much they're using, whether they're using it locally or remotely over the network, and it'll show what the write back status is. Then we go to performance and we can look at all the performance. So at the top, we'll have an option of flash data store, read, write, or custom. This will make sense here in a minute, but you can look at things on, you know, how much reads and writes came off a of flash against versus data store. How were our reads and our writes compare? What's the latency on our reads versus our writes? Or you can do custom and select the boxes that you want to check. Then we have a time range, last 10 minutes, hour, day, week, month, or again, custom. And if you have multiple flash clusters, you can select those. I only have one. So let's close that, let's close that. So looking at summary, this is overall from a cluster view we can look at VMIOPS. Over time series, which is just a line graph here uh, that shows you over the last hour, because that's what we've selected, we can turn these on and off. So what's our total IOP? Well, that's it. How much of it came from local flash, network flash, or went to the data store because it was not in cache? And so you can kind of overlay these and see what they do and start taking a look at all the numbers. And what you'll find is, you know, depending on what we look at, it looks like over the last hour we were running something, one of my VMs was doing something, so we got some good spikes that came off a of cache. Some of it still had to be pulled off a data store. The other option is you can look at a performance map, which is like a heat map, say, from vCenter Operations. And it'll say, here's your VM, and it groups these by host. So Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, each sub-block is a VM, and it sizes it by the number of IOPS. So it's a quick and easy way to see who's using are doing the most work. We can then move down and look at latency, same thing, time and performance map, total latency, local flash latency, which is usually very little, network flash latency, which will be a little bit more, but usually very good, and then data store latency, which is much higher, and again, a performance map. You have VM throughput, which just shows your overall throughput, and your hit rate and eviction rate. So hit rate is how often, you know, I got something out of cache, against going across to the data store and eviction rate is how often I got rid of stuff out of cache. My VMs aren't real heavy, so my eviction rate is very, very low. But my cache hit rate is very good, except for a few dips. I've got one machine that does a bunch of random I.O. that sometimes puts the hurt on those numbers, but you can see it there. You can also look at it from the flash device, what your hit rate and your eviction rates are. But again, uh, let's see, I forgot to show you read-write, so let's go to read-write. From VM IOPS time series, we can say total, how much your IO was read, how much your IO was write. And again, we can do things like latency, doing the same thing, reads, writes. So good performance charting. You come in here and figure out how well your system is working. Uh, let's see, that was summary. We can then look at VM, so it'll say eat this VM does, is averaging this many IOPS, this latency, throughput, hit rate, and eviction rate. If we click a VM, we can then get these charts just for that VM, number of IOPS for the VM, latency, throughput, 
throughput and hit rate and eviction rate. So if you want to fine tune, you know, drill down on say a SQL or an exchange server, you can absolutely do that. And again, uh, we only get read write, but we can do time and flash cluster. And then there's flash devices. From that point of view, what's your IOPS? How many IOPS you're servicing? What's your latency? What's your throughput? And what's your eviction rate and cache hit rate for this specific one? And you can go through and look at those. Latency averages are very good. Uh, but, I mean, you can pull out all kind of information from this. And then there's advanced. Advanced is just some, I guess, advanced settings, really. But you can do things like turn off the getting started tab, which I'm not sure I'd call that advanced, but okay. Uh, you can blacklist VMs. Here's where you say prevented from using cache. You can add your VMs there. Network usage. I mentioned this when we do synchronous writes. For peers, we use the vMotion interfaces. It'll show you the interface. This one is unknown. This is a beta version. There's some UI bugs and things like that in this version. Uh, it's been pretty solid as far as um, actual functionality. Uh, I've only hit one bug, which Pernix already knew about, so darn. But uh, it shows unknown because I'm using a, a VM kernel on a distributed switch, and it does not have a name. I'm hoping in the final one it'll show like VMK1, VMK2, but that's why it shows unknown. About gives me my version and support lets me grab logs. So you can see this from the cluster side. You can then go to a host, Pernix data tab, and you'll say here's the version of the extension, here's the write back peers that I'm using when I do my sync writes, here's my IOPS, my latency, and my throughput for this specific host. You can see usage again, I've only got one VM running on this host, and it'll show you how much cache it's using local and across the network and again flash devices and the performance charts. So this is specific for this host. And then you can go even narrower and go on a, a VM, click the tab again, and it'll say here's the name of the flash cluster I belong to, local, network usage, requested policy status, and again my VM IOPS latency and throughput. And once again our usage charts and our performance charts. So we can go all the way from the cluster to the host to the VM and pull up all this information. So, I mean, all in all, it's a very slick system, very easy to use, um, simple to install and get working. What I like about it, mix and match your flash. You don't have to buy specific cards from specific vendors. You can make a decision on what you want to get. You know, SSDs with your servers, third-party SSDs, third-party PCIe devices, doesn't matter, uh, anything that you want to use. The only considerations I see are you will need to have the software extension installed on your host, um, which of course gives you a little bit of a dependency when you go on to upgrade vSphere, you got to make sure it's supported. You can't use something like PowerPath VE, which I don't see as a big issue, uh, especially given the fact that there's no changes to the VMs or anything. And you do need to keep in mind uh, bandwidth and throughput for your vMotion interfaces. So if you're overloading those, maybe time to go 10 gig. This beta does not support multi-NIC vMotion. I'm hearing that's going to come in a later release, not on the GA release, so uh, not yet. And also this version, the initial GA, is going to support block. I'm doing iSCSI. It'll be iSCSI or Fiber Channel. Uh, NFS will come later, so that would be nice as I like to use NFS for things. But very, very interesting technology. Uh, we've been working with this in our lab doing benchmarks with good enterprise SSDs and controllers. Very, very impressed. So that's it for the demo. Thank you.